What's up guys, Mason the Brock Henderson here, and this is Agent Carter Season 2, Episodes 7 and 8. Oh, sorry, 6 and 7. Life of the Party and Monsters. Now, last week, the episode ran long, and I watch another show right after this, so as soon as it ended, I had to switch over there and I'd already missed like the first five minutes. I did not get to see that this was going to be a two hour event tonight. So I'm much, much later than I thought I'd be, so if I yawn, that's why. I'm very tired. I just thought I'd throw that in there because this show is making me tired now. <laughs> um, but yeah, this was a two hour event, so you had two episodes in one night. Um, and because I forget where it left off, you know, I can't really remember exactly where it cut in the middle. I'm just going to talk about it all. Um, but it's it's getting very very interesting uh, because in the first part the first half of it it's kind of like them trying to figure out okay we got to get to Whitney Frost you know you've got uh, Jason and he's like slowly being drawn away by some unknown source and they're trying to figure out how to stabilize him he's got an idea of what he can do because of the zero matter energy whatever it is that he absorbed it made him tangible for a second and so he's trying he's got this idea of what he can do but he needs some of Whitney Frost like zero matter out of her to uh, build this machine or whatever um, it's all it's all that hokey Marvel like Marvel science stuff you know the, the stuff that sounds like it should be real science but it's obviously not because they're talking about superhuman stuff Anyway, um, and so they're trying to figure out how are we going to get, you know, how are we going to get this stuff out of her, uh, how are we going to do all this with the fact that Peggy's hurt, and so they decide, hey, I know, let's turn to that psychopath that tried to kill Peggy and wants to be like Peggy, Dottie. Um... What were you thinking? <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong. I understand it, but at the same time I'm thinking, you know this can't go well. You know this is not going to end well. Like, I could predict this from the very beginning. As soon as her name got mentioned, I kind of went, no. <laughs> no. This is, this will not end well. She's going to escape. She might kill somebody in the process. Things will not end well for you. You're not thinking straight. And also, while I'm on the topic of Dottie for a second, did they actually go all the way back to New York to get her to bring her back to L.A.? Because if they did, there's a lot of time that passed and we did not get to see it anyway. Just because she definitely was not being held in L.A. And yet they found her and got her out and stuff. Now, anyway... Um, so they figure let's use her, so they break her out of her little insane asylum cell, and um, then as soon as she gets out, they get her into a net, shock her, and then put a little tracking device on her so that she can't make it out. Um, she has to follow their orders, she can't leave, she tries to, you know, there's a way to get her back. You know, you want again? <sighs> Anyway, a lot of information, uh, they're using Dottie to get this uh, sample of blood, uh, or what should be blood, from Whitney Frost, and what happens next is just this hodgepodge of everything that can go wrong, going wrong. And it's not like I didn't see it coming, or I didn't like it. But at the same time, like, I'm, I'm so mixed on how I feel about it. Because on the one hand, I'm frustrated watching, seeing all this stuff going wrong. And yet at the same time, I'm thinking, they want me to be frustrated. Like, there's no other explanation for why they did all this stuff than to try to frustrate me. Because I feel like I should be frustrated watching this story go on right now. Everything that can go wrong is going wrong. I feel like I should be frustrated. 
I feel like this show is trying to make me frustrated, and if they are, they're doing a great job. Like, they are doing their job very well, because I honestly am so upset with some, some of the choices that these people are making and some of the things that's happening right now. Um, so, like, first of all, you've got Jack Thompson, who's being a total just moron right now. And he pisses me off to no end. And I feel like he's supposed to. Because I said before, I'm pretty sure he's going to die this season. I'm pretty sure that, you know, he's helping out the bad guys right now. And he's so, he's just so blind to everything that they're doing. I have no doubt by the end of the season, he'll have figured it all out. He'll have figured out that they're bad guys. And he's going to die a death, a sacrifice, a redemption of sorts. So, there's that. And... It, it still frustrates me, though. Like, I, I see where they're going with it, but I'm still frustrated watching, like... <sighs> You're an idiot, Jack. Like, really? One thing. Ah, caffeine. But really, like, how can you be so stupid? How can you not see all the stuff that they're doing? You even saw the newspaper that Peggy predicted was going to happen because she went... Jack Thompson's an idiot, but he's going to die at the end of the season. I'm 100% positive of it. Um, then you've got you, Jarvis and Dottie go to this event uh, where Whitney Frost is going to be. They send Jarvis over to, to distract Jack Thompson. I was just like, wait. You really had to distract? Like, you couldn't just stay away from him? You had to send Jarvis to distract him, which will only make him more suspicious? Really? What was the point of that? Like, wouldn't it make more sense to have Jarvis and Dottie sneak out together? I I didn't understand that choice at all. Like, all you had to do was stay away from him, because he was, like, in the middle of this large ballroom, and where they needed to go was away from all of that. And yet, for some reason, they sent Jarvis over to talk to him to distract him, which only just makes him more suspicious of the fact that Peggy's probably somewhere around. I'm just like, that was stupid. And it leads to more stupidity. You've got Dottie getting the blood sample from Whitney. And then she wants to see more of what's going on. Incredibly crazy scene with Whitney. Like, Calvin apparently had this plan to have her taken in for studying or something. Um, and so she has, uh, he has her show off her powers to this council. And then these two guys come in and like start to take her with these, <laughs> like, animal rope things. And then she shows, apparently her powers have gotten better now. <laughs> because she, like, does this to the ground, and stuff comes out of her hand, and it absorbs the two guys that are trying to take her. I'm just like, holy crap, she is more powerful now <laughs> than ever. Um, so after she takes out the two guys that are trying to take her, she, she then proceeds to take out all but four of the council members and Calvin Chadwick, so we don't have to put up with his, like, smug little face anymore. I don't know why. I don't know why that actor just rubs me the wrong way, but every time I see that actor in anything, I always extremely dislike his character. I did in this one, too. So, he's gone. Um, and then Whitney kind of takes over the council. You know, she, she is now in charge, and that's very interesting turn of events. Um, but Dottie witnesses this all. She then gets caught trying to escape, um, starts beating up guys, which Peggy and um, Sousa are in the van, and all of a sudden, after they have like this little romantic moment, which I want to slap both of them, because I'm just like, Peggy, you have Jason, Sousa, go back to your fiancé, you know, just tell her it's all a mistake, Peggy's gonna leave after all of this, go win her back, you moron. Um, because the first season tried so hard to get me to like them together, and then at the beginning of this season, split them apart. I'm just like, okay, so they're not meant to be together. And yet now they're trying to bring them back together, I'm just like, make up your mind, show, do you want me to ha want them together or not? So, I'm pissed off at that. And then all of a sudden the van like shakes as they're about to kiss, and they realize, oh, Dottie's taking out guys. Um, Jarvis is looking for her, but not before Jack shows up, and 
takes her out. Not kills her, but knocks her out. So now, you know, they've gotten a hold of Dottie, which means now Whitney has a hold of Dottie. And then the, that that's about where the first episode ends, because the second one is all about um, Whitney interrogating Dottie, finding out about Peggy, and this is more, the second half is more where everything really starts to fall apart. Uh, because, I mean, the way it ends, everything is pretty much in shambles. Like, there, you've, you've got, Jason gets taken, so now Whitney has him. You've got uh, Jarvis's wife get shot by Whitney Frost, to she's not going to die, because Whitney even says, you know, she... I think our, uh, Jarvis's wife says you know, she'll never start look. She'll never stop looking for you. She's like, but I can slow her down and shoots her. So obviously this was just a way to get Peggy off her trail for the for the moment. Um, so she's most likely gonna make it. Uh, you've got Sousa gets the crap beat out of him by some henchmen, and then goes into work and finds uh, Vernon Masters is waiting for him, and somehow has the ability to take over his job. And I'm just like, hang on a minute, <laughs> like, let's slow down for one second and kind of take a step back and look at this. Does this make any sense whatsoever? I mean, really think about this. And this is, honestly, this is the one part of the show where I had to stop and say, this is stupid. You know, the rest of it, it, it all falls apart and I'm frustrated that it's falling apart and at the same time, I love it because that's part of the show. But this one doesn't make any sense to me. The fact that Vernon Masters can just step in after somehow knowing that Sousa was going to get the crap kicked out of him and just take over his job without anybody saying anything. First of all, he's not a part of the SSA. I thought he was, like... I understood he had a lot of power, but to step in and say, I'm just going to take over your job position, Susan is allowed to say no to that, right? Like, why would he not? It's like if somebody came in here right now and said, all right, Mason, we need you to step aside for a second. Um, one second. And then start beating the crap out of me and said, we're going to take over your videos for you. And I was just like... No, nope, I'm hurting, but I can still do the. I can still do these reviews. No, no, you cannot do the reviews. I'm gonna do it for you. It's like, but this, you don't own this. You do not control this. You're not allowed to just step in. And yet, Sousa just kind of stands there and accepts it. I'm just like, Sousa, what? I don't get it. I don't understand how Masters is able to do that. Now. Maybe they'll explain, or maybe Susu was just kind of standing there for a second before he went in to give him a piece of his mind. I don't know. But the way it set up, it made it look like Susu was just kind of like, well, he's right. I better go home now and take a load off. <laughs> just like, this is stupid. Um, but to be fair, it's the one problem I have with this show uh, so far. <laughs> So, all, like I said, that's another thing going wrong. Vernon Masters is now running the SSA branch in L.A. for some reason. So everything's falling apart. Everything is, like, in shambles now. Everything they've been working towards, tr trying to stop Whitney Frost, trying to stop this council. Um, even, like, Dottie escapes, which actually is kind of stupid on Peggy's part, which is an, another one of those... Is this show trying to frustrate me by making her make stupid decisions? And that's just part of the show. Because she leaves a cop out there. Just a normal cop. And she's just like, alright, do not listen to anything she says. And don't open this trunk no matter what. For nothing. I'm just like, you really think Dottie's not going to escape somehow? You really think she's not going to break out of the trunk, take down the cop, and escape? I mean, this is Dottie Underwood we're talking about here. She is a crazy psycho. And... A pretty freaking great spy. You know, she knows what she's doing. And yet, Peggy's just like, nah, I'm sure leaving one cop outside my trunk will stop her. No. <laughs> no. This is just like when you first decide you're going to break her out. I'm like, this will not end well. And it does not end well. 
so that happens. But yeah, just a lot of weird decisions from the, from the characters this week, and then everything falls apart. And I kind of saw it coming, too. And here's the thing. I feel like it's, it's falling apart because next week is going to be whenever things kind of hit hit the fan. You know, like, everything's finally going to come to a head, and we're going to have a little bit of a square off, and it's all going to lead to this final epic climactic battle where they have to go all out and sacrifice everything to stop Whitney Frost. Because she is extremely powerful at this point. Like, she doesn't even have to touch you anymore to absorb you. She can just reach out and send someone to zero matter to absorb you. Um, which actually was kind of interesting because she tried to do that to grab something out of Jason's hand. And then he starts absorbing the zero matter out of her. So I feel like he's going to be the one to combat her, which would be very interesting to see. Like, you know, she she's the one that's been absorbing people, but he can absorb stuff from her that's gonna be pretty cool to see um but yeah it just it feels like this episode was kind of the the moment where things like everything goes wrong before next week where they're trying to build build themselves back up to set up for the epic final battle um so it is all kind of going according to a little bit of a system which is not bad but at the same time I've seen it done before, and I hope they do it in a clever enough way that doesn't make me go, oh, well, that was cliche. Because they can't. You know, they've done cliches very well um, in this season and in the first season. You know, they, uh, the the one where, what's his name? The chief from the first season. Like, having him die after he figures out everything that's going on and entrusting Peggy to solve the problem. I, that's kind of a cliche. I've seen it happen before, but they did it very well. And he, his character was such such a good character that the way they handled it was good and very enjoyable. So they can do cliches as long as they do them well. I just hope that they do this season well. <laughs> because right now it seems like it's setting up for an ultimate like possible cliche. Maybe it won't. Maybe they have something special in store. I don't know. But right now, things are just sort of going according to plan. This is the moment where they have to suffer through all of this stuff because next they're going to figure out what to do. They're going to figure out, you know, what's the next step? What do we do next? Um, so I, I like it. I really did enjoy this episode. And there was a lot of, like, finding out about Whitney's powers was pretty freaking crazy. I mean, she's. All of a sudden, it's like, whoosh. I'm like, oh my god, she can absorb people without touching them now. This cannot be good for our heroes. Um, and even the final scene where she shoots Jarvis's wife, like, everything before that, it just kind of had this intense feeling about it. Like, somebody might die, but then nobody dies. <laughs> Which, I kind of got the same feeling last week, whenever you know, Peggy was fighting her, and they brought along Rose, and they brought along that that IT guy from SSAM just like somebody could die this way and then nobody died <laughs> even though Peggy got rhubarb sticking through her um so overall good episode good good episode to have everything fall apart I don't like that they're kind of rushing through because this week was a two hour event next week is a two hour event so they're they've got ten episodes which actually let me just check this really fast Huh, yeah. So it's actually running the same amount of time that the first season did. The first season had eight episodes. This season has eight weeks, but two of the weeks have two-hour events. So it's almost like they stretched out how long the actual season is without stretching out the length of like weeks that we have to wait, um, which means... I, I, hang on. One one more thing to check. Okay, so actually last year it started earlier and ended. I uh, no, yeah, it started and ended earlier. So it ran for eight weeks last year. It's running for eight weeks this year. 
I, I guess that's sort of the the marketing thing. You know, it starts off a little bit after Agents of Shield ends, and then ends right before the second half of Agents of Shield season begins. Um, so, you know, it kind of feels like they're set to a system. But anyway, that that's just more. That, that's not so much about this show. It's more about the entire setup of like the series, I guess. But anyway, moving on. This ep- this episode in whole is a very good episode, and I don't want to sound like I'm crapping on it too much because I'm really not. Like I do enjoy this episode. It's just that one moment with Sousa and Masters just taking over his office was stupid and poorly done in my opinion. But that's the one problem I have. The rest of it is frustrating from an audience point of view. It's not frustrating as in, man, this... This episode sucks. It fr- it's frustrating me. No, it's this episode is so good because it's frustrating me because it wants to frustrate me and that it's succeeding in doing that. So maybe it's not. Maybe maybe it didn't frustrate you at all. Let me know down in the comments. You know, leave your opinion down below. We can talk about it, discuss what do you think is going to happen next, how you think this season is going to end, and are you ready for Agents of Shield to start back? I I want to see Daisy again. Anyway, that's this review. Leave a like and subscribe for more Agents of Agent Carter content, and I will see you at the next review. Peace out.